Greetings, Eric Backer. Good to be back. I'm going to talk again about another topic. A subscriber here has asked me, can you please talk about the pros and cons of prebiotics? I can certainly do that. In fact, I wrote a whole web page on the topic, and I'll put the link to that, to that down below, uh, to that particular page. But I'm also going to put down the food sources of prebiotics, so you don't actually have to get this as a supplement. And it's far better off that you actually chew and eat these foods containing these sugars. It's far better for your colon. Research has shown you're going to get really good production of short-chain fatty acids, which I've spoken about in previous videos. The chewing's important rather than the swallowing of the pills, okay? So I've been in this business a long time, uh, long before uh, these prebiotic sort of name came out. There's a guy called Marcel Robert Freud, who in 1995 coined the phrase prebiotic. What Dr. Robert Freud found out is there were certain types of sugars, uh, particularly what we call oligosaccharides, you know, <clears throat> different types of sugars, and these actually go through the gut unchanged. They don't get digested. So when they get to the colon, they ferment and they feed the good bacteria or the probiotics. So the prebiotics feed the probiotics through ferment bacterial fermentation. You can read all about this in Wikipedia and different sites and things like that. But you know, prior, I remember when Robert Freud came out with this research, it wasn't really about supplements, it was about food, and it was about, you know, he discovered these sugars and their amazing effect on the beneficial bacteria. And this really um, led to a lot of research in the probiotic realm, which today, probiotics are everything. But when I first started to recommend probiotic supplements in the 80s, people thought I was nuts. You know, they, they couldn't really see the benefit. They said, just have a bowl of yogurt. They had no real understanding of the powerful nature of probiotic bacteria. So let's look at these sugars. We've got monosaccharides. We've got oligosaccharides. We've got polysaccharides, okay? So polysaccharides tend to be starches or very undigestible kind of foods, you know, um, and these are basically sugars, no different from white sugar. It's just their bonds and chains tend to be more long and more elong elongated and more complex. So it's more difficult for the body to break these sugars down and therefore to act on them and then create the same kind of energy reaction out of that than you would out of, say, a teaspoon of white sugar. So a piece of sweet potato compared to a teaspoon of white sugar, you can see the difference. One will have an immediate action on the body one will have a delayed action on the body in terms of its digestibility and how it stimulates and produces energy in the body. The starchy foods, <clears throat> the polysaccharides are also quite good for the gut, but it's the oligosaccharides that really have a tremendously good effect. They tend to be sweet by nature. You know, the, for example, uh, the onions and the leeks and the garlics and these sorts of foods, uh, Jerusalem artichoke, chicory root, they have a sweetish kind of taste, and that's this sugary kind of uh, effect, you know, that you can really feel there. Now, in America, if you're, say, in California watching this right now, or in the States particularly, you'll be consuming, if you're lucky, between one or two, maybe three grams a day of these sugars. But if you live in certain parts of Europe, you'll be consuming 10 grams or more. So, and if you live in Africa, you could be consuming way more, like 10 times as much. So depending on the type of food you eat, if you're eating minimally processed food and a lot of natural food, like I do, you'll be getting lots and lots of these sugars into your body, which means you'll be getting trillions of beneficial bacteria as a result. I have did a bit of research when it comes to particularly fructo-oligosaccharides, FOS and inulin, and I didn't like a lot of the research I found. But what initially happened in my practice when I started to recommend supplements like 3 lac and like Sintol, and there are many other ones out there, <clears throat> I noticed that an increasing stream of phone calls to my clinic on dissatisfied patients, people that were talking about bloating and gas and diarrhea and headaches and feeling sick. And I thought it was die off until I stopped using these supplements completely and then just gave probiotics on their own and I found a far better result with people. Even better when I included enzymes, sub enzymatic supplements, I would give those, and then I'd also give probiotics. This eventually led me to producing the Canzita Restore product, which is completely uh, free from these prebiotic sugars. I found research linking prebiotic sugars also to, to the stimulation and overgrowth of Klebsiella bacteria linked with autoimmune disease. I also found research linking prebiotic sugars in supplements to Candida overgrowth. 
I immediately stopped using prebiotics years ago and I haven't used them since. Now they may be okay for you, but for the majority of people I've worked with, the chronically sick people, they're not okay. They created untoward gut reactions and it really didn't suit me in the clinic to have a very busy practice and have lots and lots of dissatisfied people uh, initially calling and then later with computer technology emailing and emailing so I got sick of it and I realized that the prebiotics were often underpinning this aggravation so that's the con in my opinion it's not good for people with a very sick gut people have this fallacious belief that if you pile lots of fermented and cultured foods in the gut you know sauerkraut and yogurt and all this sort of stuff and then take prebiotics on top and probiotics it's too much stick with the food people stick with the food okay food should be medicine and there are a lot of good choices you can make when it comes to the prebiotic foods okay particularly the allium family which are one of my favorite groups the brassicas and the allium contain high amounts of these natural occurring sugars in them which ferment beautifully in the colon and confer great health but the great thing about the allium family also is they've proven to have effects on keeping the blood thin reducing blood pressure stimulating immunity improving the mood so there are many different uh, elements to these foods that are far and beyond the prebiotic sugar nature. Foods are fantastically good foods to eat to confer great health to the body. So instead of taking some synthesized sugar from some factory, calling it a prebiotic, you want to think carefully about doing that. Now probiotics are entirely different. They're actually bacteria, all right? they're not sugars. If you are going to eat sugars, eat natural sugars like I do. I mean, look at this beautiful oh, jar of honey that I got here, okay? And this nice jar here, these are from my beehive. So this is the sort of sugars uh, that I like to have in my diet, uh, the natural sugars, not the artificial sugars. Right? Brassicas also confer incredibly good uh, benefits to your health, not just in terms of the sugars and starches you know, that, that you can build good bacteria on, but because of the many protective nutrients that they include in them that help to prevent things like cancer, you know, and many immune different diseases. Azuki beans, pinto beans, navy beans, uh, green tea, raw cacao, asparagus, beetroot, green beans, all very healthy foods. So the con and the pro, it's quite interesting. So there are pros with prebiotics, but in my opinion, those pros come from eating foods that contain those things rather than supplements, which is a con in my opinion, because they can stimulate the production of untoward you know, bacteria and yeast in your body, which you don't really want. So you're, it's actually not really a good idea, uh, I believe, to take prebiotic sugars. Uh, and more and more, I'm finding supplements containing them, and they've been artificially synthesized. So I'd probably be aware of these kind of sugars. I can see them going down the same route as a lot of these artificial sweeteners that we're using now, uh, you know, in soft drinks, which have been linked with stroke. So I believe down in time, if someone watches this video in 50 years from now, that guy was right. I was eating my probiotics for years containing this, and now look what I've got. So. Just be careful because artificial sweetening agents have proven now to show increased effects when it comes to dementia uh, and even stroke. And there's a ton of research out there now, but when they were first released, they were meant to be the be all, end all, you know, and uh, they were going to stop people getting fat and sick and they were going to just cure a lot of diseases. And, you know, and now we're seeing the opposite. I would be very cautious when it comes to prebiotics in supplements in general. Thanks for tuning in.